We are still here in our pursuit at Africa Elevation for our I Had Africa campaign, bringing you young innovators from different arenas. Here today at the Uganda Industrial Research Institute, we are going to be chatting with the head of the instrumentation department for Uganda Industrial Research Institute. At our Africa Elevation I Had Africa campaign, we intend to inspire you with more and more videos for you to get to know more about young innovators who are breaking grounds in different fields. Engineer Philippa Makobori, thank you so much for having us here today. You're welcome. So, you are the head of the instrumentation division at Uganda Industrial Research Institute. Tell us a little bit about what that entails. Okay, so to start with, um, we deal mostly in the design of electronics applications and we're looking at four key sectors. Healthcare, agriculture, control systems for small medium enterprises and energy efficient solutions. And we basically do mostly research and development, but we also have other parallel activities which include mentorship of university students, specifically computer, electrical and biomedical engineering students. And we also have an intensive industrial training program, which we keep reviewing and updating every year, which gives students a hands-on experience to supplement their regular curriculum. So recently, you were invited to a grand medical technology hackathon at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is essentially where teams are formed and you design and prototype projects that find solution to, solutions excuse me, to global healthcare problems. Could you please tell us a little bit more about this um, venture that you were invited to and what it entails? So I'll start by describing what a medical technology hackathon entails. Uh, basically, it's an event, uh, more or less like a competition, where clinicians, business consultants, and engineers come together and figure out solutions to healthcare problems. And it's a three-day three -day event, and at the end of it, you have to make a pitch. And that pitch should uh, explain the problem that you're trying to address, the target group that would benefit from your solution, your actual solution, and your business model and you also have to demo your prototype that okay. you've developed. So it's a very intense event. Actually, you only have 24 hours to oh, build wow. a prototype and demo it. But it's, it's a very uh, fast way <laughs> of uh, getting a product out there and really thinking through your idea in a very short period of time. And there's been a lot of success from hackathons. Actually, there are a number of products that are actually being tested in, if, for example, Massachusetts General Hospital. There's an augmented infant resuscitator that is going a long way in resuscitating children um, that lack oxygen uh, when they are immediately born. It's a very intense event that yields results very quickly. You and your team recently won an award from Camtech, which is also which is also organizing a hackathon. Essentially you designed a tool or you designed a low cost diagnostic tool for pneumonia related illnesses. And as we know, pneumonia related illnesses really their fatalities lie in late diagnosis. How do you feel that this tool that you designed can counter this problem? CAMTEC stands for the Consortium for Affordable Medical Technologies and it's under the Center of Global Health at Massachusetts General Hospital. So basically their mandate is to develop appropriate and affordable medical devices for low resource settings. So they actually have uh, two satellite bases, one in India and one in Uganda and Imbara University is actually where they are. Uh, base is. So annually they have this medical technology hackathon event okay. and we attended it last year, that was 2014, and we were privileged to be first runners up. So uh, going back to the low cost diagnostic tool, uh, basically we're target targeting children under five. Okay. So as you know, misdiagnosis is a big problem and right now there are very few affordable devices. Um, the World Health Organization actually has, it's called an acute respiratory infection timer, but it's manually done, it's highly inaccurate, it's uh, because it's prone to errors from the health workers. So we decided to develop an automated low-cost tool using obviously our expertise from electronics applications so that um, we can have 
uh, a tool that can give a very accurate diagnosis. So I think um, this tool would go a long way in saving the lives of children and uh, enabling them to get treatment in good time. Most people, with you talking about all this healthcare, would not know that actually you are an electrical engineer. This is the profession for which you studied, this is your discipline. You did your undergraduate degree um, in University of Alberta in Canada. So most people would look at it and say, and when you look at when the comparability between Canada and Uganda, obviously, from the onset, Canada has more opportunities with regards to basically harnessing your profession. Was there any temptation? Did you ever feel like, mm, maybe I should stay in Canada, it would be easier for me, or was it straightforward from the word go that you knew you wanted to come back home and make a change? Well, that's actually a very interesting question because, um, well, it, it obviously was not really planned for me to come back after I had finished my uh, degree. And obviously, as you were saying, there, there are a lot of job opportunities in Canada. But um, just putting everything into context, at the time I graduated, that's actually when the recession hit. So a lot of my friends who okay. were in university were being laid off because obviously they were the less less I experienced engineers. So I thought, you know what, it would be maybe a good opportunity for me to explore uh, the job base back home and it was a really big challenge because I couldn't find exactly what I liked and I couldn't really apply what I had studied so it was pretty much um, a trial and error in okay. the beginning <laughs> yes but I started out actually in the telecommunications uh, mm -hmm. area I worked at MTN for about a year and a half, and that wasn't very challenging for me, so I decided to... Um, I did see you at the marathons. Yes. As <laughs> yes. a side note. Yes, <laughs> I do like participating in those marathons. Yes. But um, I stumbled upon Uganda Industrial Research Institute. I was introduced uh, to it by a very good friend of mine, and I just discovered that they had um, an opportunity for me and they were looking for someone with my skill set. Oh, okay. So they decided to create the instrumentation department and I basically uh, designed a concept paper and strategized on what I envisioned it to be. So that's actually how everything started out. Nothing was really cast in stone, nothing was really planned. It was something that just came to be. Oh, okay. I believe, and you would also testify to the fact that there are a number of young professionals who have been trained in this discipline, science and technology arena, such as software engineers, mechanical engineers, who are reluctant to make the move back home because they have, of course, the fear that they will not get employment where they will actually be able to practice their disciplines. What advice would you have for them to nudge them maybe to come back home? Well, uh, the beauty about Uganda is there are a lot of things that haven't been done. So there are lots of opportunities for you to actually pioneer yeah. a lot of innovations, services, whatever you're interested in. Uh, for example, I'll give an example. Biomedical engineering is a very new area. And when we started out, it was just an idea. We could see uh, the evident need in the healthcare sector. We would visit Mulago National Referral Hospital and there's no equipment, the equipment there is not sufficient to cater for the patients. So I think it's, it's, you just have to be a bit daring. It is a bit challenging in the beginning. You may not see results right away, but there are a lot of opportunities. And it's a lot easier to gain very strong partnerships when you're in a developing country, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Because in developed countries, a lot has already been done. They're already on nanotechnology, you know, cutting edge solutions. So it's a lot difficult to be visible in such a huge pool of very accomplished people. But if you come to a developing country where a lot has not been done, there's a chance for you to, you know, gain a lot of attention from, from the outside. And another, um, advice I'd give uh, well, professionals in the science and technology arena coming back would be to really think through what you'd like to do and try and think of things in a more innovative 
manner. Mm -hmm. Yes, and not just think about, okay, I'm writing a great resume and cover letter and I'm going to get a job. You have to be a little bit creative, creative. and yeah. think outside the box. Okay, okay, that is very, very solid advice. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at what you have done so far, you range from healthcare, you're an engineer, at the same time, I'm just a little bit curious as to how you get all this done because also you and your team are breaking waves with regards to agricultural productivity, which is something we at Africa Elevation are very passionate about. You recently won an award with your team, alongside your team, under the United Nations Young Women Innovators Award, specifically for the work benefiting small-scale women farmers. Tell us a little bit more about this project and what it entails. Okay, so it was actually one of my colleagues who worked with another colleague from the biotechnology department here at Uganda Industrial Research Institute and they designed an, a portable electrochemical aflatoxin testing kit. So just for the viewers, aflatoxin is kind of, ask. it's the fungus that appears on grain, okay. so groundnuts, and uh, if you consume this over time, it can actually yield to cancer, and people oh. are not really aware of that. So this testing kit uh, determines the level of aflatoxin in a particular grain. So it's a combination of uh, biotechnology as well as electronics. Finally, Philippa, you mentioned something in your very, very first answer about uh, mentorship programs with regards to so many young scientists who are aspiring or even considering or actually in the field currently with regards to being in tertiary institutions. Please tell us more about the mentorship program with the, that you have with the tertiary institutions. Okay, so our mentorship program is mostly focused on university students and we look at mentoring them in their final year design projects. Okay. So making sure that their prototypes adhere to all the software, hardware, you know, regulations, that kind of a thing and, and help them get it working so that they can demo for their profs and graduate. But in the long run, we're trying to equip them with hands-on skills so that when they eventually go out in the field, they're able to apply their knowledge, maybe start their own businesses. You know, we don't really want to uh, make them regurgitate information that we have taught them. We want them to be as hands-on as possible. In June, you and your colleague have been invited to Toronto to give an oral presentation at the World Congress on Medical Physics and Biomedical Engineering. This is really, really an auspicious occasion and event. Could you tell us a little bit more about what this entails and congratulations on that invitation? Thank you. Well, uh, we'll be making a presentation for one of the projects that we are developing. It's an electronically controlled intravenous uh, infusion set, so just to uh, put that in layman's terms, you know intravenous delivery. Yes. So we're looking at monitoring and control so that you're able to uh, make sure that the rate of flow is at the correct rate and you administer the correct volume. And that is specifically for neonates, okay. you know, young children and children under five. Because as you know, um, if you go into the hospitals, especially the government hospitals, they actually manually control it, which is very dangerous. It can cause morbidity, in worst cases, mortality. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that uh, fluid or drugs are intravenously are delivered very safely. So we'll be making a presentation uh, on, on that particular project. Well, thank you so much for having us here and congratulations on all your accomplishments and all the groundbreaking work that you're doing here. Many, many blessings to you here at Uganda Industrial Research Institute, the instrumentation department on all your work from Africa Elevation and good luck on your presentation that you have in June. We hope to speak to you again and get feedback on what's happening with you from time to time and thank you. Thank you very much for interviewing me. It has been a privilege to be interviewed by Africa Elevation and I think all your objectives resonate with what we're trying to do here and it would be a pleasure partner partnering with you maybe on some of the mentorship programs. That would be fantastic. You're very welcome to come and interview me anytime. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video for our I Had Africa campaign for Africa Elevation. We hope that you are just as much as we are inspired to elevate.